Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is true, I failed. And I'm going to explain how in this video, but before we get into it, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you have not already. Don't forget to leave those comments down below. Now let's go ahead and get into the video. So I failed at Vlogmas. I kind of felt like I was going to just because it's really hard to stay consistent at this phase in our life. I wasn't putting that much pressure on myself, which I'm so glad that I didn't. There has been quite a few things going on since my last video. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill you guys in now. And I'm going to start off with something that I think I addressed a few vlogs back that Millie seems to have lots of belly problems. So I think it was like right before he went in for his last treatment, I was talking about how she had lots of belly issues, but I wasn't sure if it was teething or if it was the formula because I had just stopped breastfeeding or I had been slowing down on breastfeeding. So I wasn't sure what the problem was there and it was actually causing quite a bit of problems. Seems like she was fine in the morning and throughout like daytime. And I say fine in the sense that she's fine when she has me or Kagan, but she was still a little bit irritable whenever she was with somebody else, which isn't normal for her I don't think I just felt like there was something off about that and then through like the evening and nighttime she would get more irritable as the night went on so like around bedtime she would get a little bit more fussy and then she would be really fussy right before bed and then she wasn't sleeping through the night anymore which she had been doing previously but there is like um sleep regressions that babies go through and like with different leaps, it can interfere with their sleeping patterns. So again, I wasn't trying to make that big of a deal out of it. I did reach out to her pediatrician a while ago because we had her on Gerber Gentle, so like the normal Gerber formula that's like the orange can, and we went through like three or four weeks of that, and that's when I noticed her stomach issues. She didn't really have big issues whenever she was on just breast milk. Since she started having issues starting that formula we did switch her over to the purple kind which is half regular formula half lactose free or soy formula just so it's a little bit easier on their tummies supposedly it can help with gas and colic that kind of stuff so we switched on to that and she had been on that for about three weeks and it was still like she was having lots of tummy issues seems like she was getting the gas out decently but she was really constipated and she was just not comfortable still even with switching the formulas so i called her pediatrician and she said since it's only been three weeks let's go one more week because it normally takes about four weeks to their bodies to adjust to a new formula when you do switch but she did not want me to switch on to the lactose free one i'm not quite sure i didn't ask the reasons why I was just assuming it's because she wanted me to wait the full four weeks. We actually did another two or three weeks on the purple formula just because if her body was going to adjust to it, then I really wanted to give it a good chance. And it didn't. We were having lots of sleeping problems. She will fight her sleep now, which she has always been such a good sleeper. Like she sleeping through the night at like two months old, I think. I don't know, pretty early on. She's just a good sleeper, but she had gotten to the point where she would fight to go to sleep because she didn't want to lay down and she would fight it less whenever she was laying on her left side which i'm assuming it's because that was that's easier to get gas out when you're laying on your left side anyways so she liked to lay on her left side and she would wake up in the middle of the night and want to be up for an hour or two like just sitting up and playing and stuff like she didn't want to lay down anymore we would have to give her gas drops so we were like not getting much sleep at all so i was like you know what we're almost done with another big can of that for Formula. it's obviously not working so we're going to switch to the blue kind which is the lactose free one fun fact i'm actually lactose intolerant and so seeing her fight through the pain that she was fighting through it hurts me really bad because i know those pains and like i could feel it for her it might sound completely weird to you guys, but I know what it's like to have the constipation and the gas issues and all of that because that's what I had as a child because I was lactose intolerant. So if I would cheat and have cheese or drink regular milk in my cereal and that kind of stuff, then I would have those pains. And it was just very familiar to me and I hated that she was going through that. I had a hunch that she was lactose intolerant, but I was just hoping that she wasn't 
because I had a lot of issues with that whenever I was a kid in the sense that I couldn't eat regular ice cream. I had to eat sherbet. Do you say sherbet or sherbet? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, so that would irritate me and I always had to have the special milk for my cereal. I don't like the flavor of milk, but sometimes I would want chocolate milk and you know, all of those kind of things as a kid that really irritated me and frustrated me and that was very hard for me. Anyways, so we went ahead and switched her milk to the Blue Gerber, the lactose-free plant-based protein formula and it is day two or day three. And the first day we would do, like she drinks four ounce bottles except for her nighttime bottle, which is six ounces. Someone decided that she was not ready for bed yet. Anyways, so whenever we first started her on the lactose free formula, we did half and half bottles. So four ounces of water with one scoop of the purple, one scoop of the blue until we were out of the purple which we were almost out of anyways and then i think today was our first full day with just the lactose free milk seems like as soon as we started her on it we already saw some improvements another big change for her is that we have officially started sleep training i'm actually in her room right now and her crib used to be right here on this back wall right behind me and it's not there anymore with daniel i never sleep trained him daniel slept with us until he was about four years old and then he just one night i was like okay now you gotta sleep in your big boy bed in your big boy room and that's what he did there was no training back after that used to occasionally he would ask if he could sleep in the same bed as us and when we said no it wasn't a big fight he's slept in his bed pretty well but like i said he as a baby never slept on his own with kaden i sleep trained him at about a year old it was horrible i do the cry it out method i know that that's a little controversial but that is how i sleep train my babies and he got to the point where he wasn't sleeping very well in the bed with us and so we were losing sleep so i was like we just gotta nip it in the butt we've gotta sleep train and the first night he screamed for two hours in his bed um of course we would go in there from time to time and tell him it's okay lay back down that kind of thing um, but it took him about two hours to actually fall asleep. And the second night, it was about an hour and so on and so forth. But I think it took about five days for him to be okay in that situation. With Landon, he slept with us until about six months. And then he was crawling at that age. And he was our first baby that wanted to get up and crawl in the middle of the night. And that scared the crap out of me. So with him, I moved because he was so little still, I moved the crib into our room and I put it next to our bed and that's how we did it. I would put him in his bed and we would walk out of the room and then whenever he was asleep, we would come in and go to sleep. With him, I think it took about an hour the first night and he was sleep trained in about four days. With Amelia, she is seven months old and she is a crawler and she, just like Landon, wants to get up and crawl in the middle of the night and that scares me we don't want her to crawl off the bed so i did move her crib into our room our bedroom now is much bigger than the one that we had when we did this with landon so that's really nice she doesn't have to be right up next to my bed and we are on day four of her taking naps in her room and with her, it has gone really smoothly. I think it's gonna take longer. Like I said, with Cade was about five days and with Landon, it was like three or four days. Um, with her, I think it's gonna take longer, but she doesn't do the screaming thing that they did. So that's a lot easier for me because it doesn't make me feel horrible. So the first day I put her in her bed and we're just doing naps right now again because all of her tummy issues in the evening she still ends up in bed with us. I'm hoping tonight she'll get into her own crib but we will see how that goes. But for the past- <laughs> Goodness gracious, that's a good puppy. But for the past four days she's been taking her morning nap and her afternoon nap in her crib just fine. I think the first day I would put her to sleep and then transfer her to the crib so she would wake up in there. And then the second day, then the second day I put her in there with her bottle. She drank her bottle in there and then I patted her stomach and she eventually fell asleep. That only took about 20 minutes, but there was no crying, which was nice. And I think, I think, and then I think that 
evening nap that same day it only took about 15 minutes yesterday was the first day that i was able to put her in her crib with her bottle and then i walk away and go sit on my bed until i know that she's asleep and i have a blanket draped over the side of the bed where she is not able to see me but i do we have those cameras in our room so i can see into the crib so i know if she's up playing or crawling or whenever she wakes up anything like that for the last two days i'm able to just put her in there with her bottle and she puts herself to sleep she drinks her bottle and then goes right to sleep or falls asleep drinking her bottle tonight like just now whenever she seemed to be tired so i thought i would put her in bed early which didn't work but i did put her in her crib with her bottle just like i do with her daytime naps and she did put herself to sleep so i'm hoping that in about an hour whenever she does get actually tired i can do that and maybe she'll fall asleep in her bed anyways wow this is getting to be a really long video sorry for that guys so originally kagan was supposed to have his pet scan on the 20th and because he has chemo on the 24th that's when the next time that we would see the oncologist is but she's going to be out of town so she was actually going to squeeze us in on the 20th in the afternoon sometime after his pet scan so that we could go over the results with her and not have to do the waiting thing but they couldn't squeeze us in because i guess they're just trying to see all of their patients before she goes on vacation so she's really really booked up but kagan has a really really good nurse navigator at the uh, cancer center that he is uh, going to and so i called her and i was a little bit stressed because they send a report on the app through the hospital and so he can get all of his results with his first pet scan before we even met the oncologist for the first time he had his pet scan and then that same day like we waited a few hours and then we were going to go back and see the oncologist and go over the scans with her but he got the scan sent to his app and you're able to read everything like the dimensions of each tumor where every tumor is located you can get information like that and for him that's good enough he doesn't like to see the doctors um i don't really know how to describe that i feel like he doesn't like to go to the doctor anymore because that first time that we met with the oncologist was very traumatic so we got really really bad news and you can't just get up and walk out you have to keep receiving this news so you're just kind of stuck and i feel like that kind of makes it to where now he doesn't like going there which is understandable so we'll go to see the oncologist and anytime that i go to ask a question he gets terrified because i do ask a lot of questions i want to know everything um mostly everything but i want all the details on the tumors and what the next step is and what the next treatment is and how we're going to keep fighting this so every time i ask a question he's afraid that it's going to be a difficult question for her to answer so he doesn't like me asking questions <laughs> but i don't like not having answers anyways going back to what i was saying we have a really great nurse navigator through the cancer center and she is just amazing i feel like the first week after he was diagnosed i feel like i talked to her multiple times a day like i would just call her just to cry and and she likes that. She likes to feel needed from what I understand. She likes to have people lean on her. And she actually, her husband went through cancer. And so she knows it firsthand how I'm going through it. She also has a stepdaughter that had actually the same cancer that my husband has. So she's pretty knowledgeable and she knows exactly the, the waves of emotions and stuff like that but whenever i found out that they weren't going to be able to see him and she's not back in clinic until january 3rd so that's the 20th is when his scan was and we're not going to get the real results to actually see the pictures until january 3rd or after because that's when she's getting in but i don't know when we can get an appointment and i just wasn't okay with that so i called her like i just explained everything to her she was actually had just saw how our appointments are lined up and how it didn't really make sense we were gonna see her on the 18th and his scan was on the 20th and so yeah so she went around she talked to the pa she talked to the actual oncologist she tried to make it to where we could get in to see her after the scan on the 20th because this is our first pet scan after diagnosis and it's pretty scary especially when we don't we're still pretty new to it so we don't 
know all of the lingo and stuff and again i'm a visual person i need to see the things i need to ask the questions but she wasn't able to get us in but she did call down to the labs to the pet scan place and she begged and begged and begged and she got us in so we will do the pet scan on the 16th that way on the 18th we can go see her see the scans please don't that way we can get in see the scans ask the questions which my husband is very excited about <laughs> he is actually really nervous in all seriousness and i am nervous because of how it went last time i was not expecting what happened last time so that kind of makes me a little bit nervous makes me want to cry just thinking about it because that was such a horrible day and i just was not prepared i was not expecting that at all what i know now i just i've I'm so hopeful and I'm feeling very good about it. I am very excited. I know that things are getting better. The question is just how much better are they? And that will determine what the next phase of treatment is for him. But I just know that it's got to be really good because I don't, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but whenever he first got his diagnosis, I was like, there's no way that it's that bad because with how big these tumors are, it doesn't look like there would be any movement in his lungs at all because there's just nowhere for the air to go and this one you could hear some air movement this one you can't hear anything now this one sounds like almost like pretty much like a normal lung and this one sounds almost as good as that one and the stuff in his neck was so tiny before if there's that much improvement in his lungs then I'm very hopeful that that is completely gone. Like I I am very, very hopeful it's gonna be okay. Positive affirmations, trusting in God. That he has a plan, he's never failed us before and he's not gonna fail us now. That's how I'm viewing it. So I'm staying very, very positive. It's gonna be okay. So depending on how much it has worked, how much it has shrank the tumors, that will determine his next phase of treatment. So that means that if it hasn't shrunk enough then he will go on what is called maintenance and to me that word scared me it makes it seem like we're just not trying to let it grow but we're also not trying to shrink it that's how it sounds to me which i'm not okay with and i voiced that to the nurse navigator and she was like that is definitely not what that means it means that we're gonna continue on with two out of the three chemos that he's on probably and see if that continues to shrink it once we get shrunken enough then we'll move on to the next thing. If things are shrunken enough, then he will do spot treatment radiation, which just attacks these, like they just target the tumors and the cancer cells. We've never done radiation before. I don't know anybody that's been through radiation, so that scares me. We know what his chemo is like. That's less terrifying, but I want whatever's going to work best for my husband. Anyways, so that is everything that's been going on the past week when I have not been vlogging. Let me just show you the room that I'm in. Her crib was in here before and it was piled like a mound in the crib with clean clothes because we just, is so behind we are a family of six and it is very very hard to keep up with the laundry so i've got it pretty much in two piles at this point i did move this table that we bring in when we're having family get-togethers so that is the clothes that is left over again all of these are clean that pile in front of the closet is to donate this pile right here is stuff that i it was on the floor so i'm going to go ahead and say it's dirty because it was on the floor that's just how i am We've got towels up there. Life is just kind of a mess right now. It's just chaos. But that's why I haven't been uploading. I hope you guys can understand. I hope I can get back into vlogging and uploading. Regardless, I'm going to try very, very hard to take you guys with us to the PET scan and throughout finding out the results of the PET scans and then Christmas, every, it's, we've got a lot of exciting things coming up. So you're gonna wanna make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up. If you did enjoy, let me know down below. Do you say Sherbert or Sherbet? Let me know in the comments below. That is it for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for sticking by us. All of the support and prayers. We appreciate you guys so, so much. As always, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.